All right, welcome to the next installment of the video where we actually start looking at instructions and actually start programming. Uh, the best laid plans of mice and men, uh, or as another famous person once put it, uh, looks like I picked the wrong week to quit drinking. Well, what I mean is, uh, you know, I started the video right at the same time as uh, work got really busy and I started losing my voice every week, or uh, uh, so family members got colds and got the flu and stuff. So. I wish I could make this video at a faster pace, but no way, not enough free time, not enough quiet time. That sucks. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> I think uh, what I'll do right at the start of this video is uh, go over the new instructions in the uh, CPU of the PC Engine. Um, so you might have seen this uh, Otaku no PCE crib sheet uh, by Tomatheus, which I uh, pointed to before um, at, at his website. That's in the last video. Uh, and it has, you know, an alphabetical and numerical listing of all the opcodes in the CPU um, and the instructions and their cycle, I think their cycle uh, count and uh, what flags they uh, adjust and so on. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is a good thing to look at just to check what, uh, what the syntax is for the opcodes. Um, yeah what the numerical format is, um, but it's it's an alphabetical or numerical listing, it's not very logical. So um, there is a website that has an opcode matrix uh, for the whole CPU at uh, www.6.atpages.jp uh, app soco uh, work pc6280 op.html um, and it looks like this, it's pretty good. Um, but again, what's new, what's old, nobody knows. So I actually took that and colorized the uh, matrix to so you can actually compare um, what what is part of the old 60, 6502 CPU and what has been added. So I will go over that right now pretty quickly. So have a look at this. All right, so that's in full screen mode. Okay, so you can see that the yeah, well, there we go. <laughs> so you can see that the uh, uh, instructions that are in gray are part of the original 6502 instruction set. Um, this video series assumes you have already done some programming of the 6502, whether it be on the uh, NES or Atari 8-bit or the uh, Commodore computers, Commodore 64. Um, I'm not going to reteach any 6502 instructions, but as you can see here, the gray ones, these are the gray ones. That was part of the original NMOS 6502 specification. And a little bit later, uh, Rockwell and Western Design Center, I think WDC, introduced the 65CO2, the CMOS version of the CPU. And it wasn't just a, you know, changing the voltages, they actually added lots of new instructions. Um, and those are the ones that I've outlined here in yellow. Um, filling a lot of the no-op or legal instruction gaps on the 6502. And actually they, uh, they added a couple more instructions, uh, like a wait instruction that was carried over to the 65816, but that's not in this 6280 CPU. Um, so this basically the 6280 is a superset of the 65CO2, the CMOS version, and you can pretty much see that clearly here. These instructions in green, which are pretty much just these ones, uh, are new instructions. And those, as you can see here on the uh, table, this is the uh, you know zero zero opcode zero zero break zero one is or and zero two is the new instruction. So basically, uh, the low nibble is along here and the high nibble is down here. Uh, you might be familiar with this chart. And so basically, all the new instructions take up the uh, x two, x three, and x four opcodes. So I'll go quickly over some of the new uh, instructions that are introduced with the 65CO2, because some of you might not be totally familiar with them. Uh, it's basically the same as some other uh, or old 6502 instructions, but they've added, uh, for example, in uh, zero page indirect mode to a few of those instructions. They're indirect without using the X or Y register, uh, or and uh, exclusive or add with carry 
store a load a so it's again zero page indexed uh, sorry indirect zero page indirect uh, compare and subtract with carry here's an unconditional branch so that's a new instruction uh, all the other branch instructions are needed to branch on a certain flag um, this one will branch uh, unconditionally so it's like a jump but it uses only uh, two bytes rather than three bytes of the jump some other new instructions which are a little bit complicated are uh, test and set bit and test and reset bit both zero page and absolute um, what these do is uh, take the top two bit bits from this zero page location and shove them right into the uh, in the negative and overflow flag in the processor status register uh, so it's a way to test the top two bits of that location quickly without loading it in the accumulator also set and reset um, this will set whichever bits uh, are set in the accumulator and uh, set those bits in the zero page location so um, if the accumulator contains one just one um, then the uh, zeroth bit uh, in this zero page register will be set to one so it's a way of uh, choosing which bits to set or reset at a zero page or an absolute location based on the uh, the, the flag uh, pattern that's in or the flag mask that's in the accumulator so I guess these are used for flag uh, turning flags on and off um, using some value in the accumulator uh, store zero so this is a way of clearing a part of RAM uh, it so instead of loading a X or Y with zero and then saving that to the zero page you can now just directly clear a memory location store zero zero page or zero, zero page X indexed okay and then here also um, you can set or reset individual bits uh, okay this is a uh, reset memory bit zero so uh, clear bit zero clear bit one clear bit two this is all zero page um, clear bit seven and then this is set so it's set to set bit zero to one set bit, bit zero uh, bit one to, to one set bit two to one so this clears and sets memory bits in the zero page so that's a way of you know having all your flags in zero page okay increment and decrement a uh, that's a new instruction in the 65 co2 you can now push and pull y directly uh, and you can push and pull x directly instead of having to transfer them to the accumulator okay you can do a, a bit test with an immediate value uh, and a so uh, it's, it's these are kind of old just new addressing modes Here's test and reset bits in, with an absolute value. Okay, they now have jump uh, with an absolute indexed value, and then store z to an absolute value, store z to an absolute value indexed by x. And then finally, over on this column, I don't think I missed anything. BBR and BBS. This is a branch if bit reset, and then branch if bit set so it'll test a zero page location it'll test w only one of the bits in that location and if the bit is uh, reset in other words zero uh, that will branch relatively from that instruction so it's a relative branch if only one of the bits in a certain zero page location is set so that's a good way of using those flags that you have in zero page and this is branch of bit set. So if the, the zeroth bit is set in a certain zero page location, uh, then it'll, uh, the uh, CP will branch to the relative location. So these are quite new and, and pretty useful too. So instead of having to and or do a bit test on, only on certain values in the accumulator, you can branch on any bit in zero page. Okay, that's a quick overview. Now finally, the green ones. These are the 6280 CPU instructions. Okay, so what do we have added to the 6280? Um, we have swap instructions, swap X and Y, swap A and X. So you don't have to push A and then pull X on the stack. Uh, you just can swap those two registers, swap A and Y. Um, we can also clear any of the registers, set them to zero, basically. Clear A, clear X, clear Y. Okay. Um, the STO, ST1, and ST2 instructions uh, write an immediate value directly to the PC Engine's VDC, the uh, video processor. So this is a way of writing and encoding direct uh, 
uh, video processor writes to the register or the index register of the VDC and then the low and high data byte. TMA, TAM, these are the ones I've told talked about before. This transfers the accumulator or memory. Sorry, I'll do TAM first. This transfers the accumulator to the memory mapping or memory paging register uh, of the uh, 6280. So it allows you to bank in and out 8K of ROM, RAM, IO. Um, and it takes an immediate value, uh, a bitwise immediate value. You should only have one bit set in that value uh, at any time. So transfer A to the uh, memory paging register, or read from the memory paging register and put that value in A. So you can save the banks that you uh, that are, are currently mapped in uh, whenever you do any kind of long jump, a long jump routine. Um, we also have test certain bits. Okay, TST. Okay, you can so you can test a uh, uh, immediate uh, value with a zero page value and absolute value, x index zero pages, etc. So here's a way of testing uh, and not resetting. So this is not reset memory bit or test and set bit. This just tests bits uh, in uh, uh, according to an immediate value. Okay, and then TII. TDD, TIN, TIA, TAI, these are all block transfer instructions. They transfer uh, up to 64k of data from one memory address to a different memory address. So this is quite a, you know, a, a short but pretty powerful instruction. Um, apparently the 65816 has some block transfer instructions as well, uh, and so this is kind of the Hudson Soft's version of it. Um, the 6280 has a branch to sub subroutine uh, uh, instruction. So instead of jump to subroutine, which is a three byte opcode op or a three byte instruction, this is now two bytes. It's relative uh, to the current program counter. So but you can branch to different subroutines. So pretty handy. Okay. Um, CSL, CSH is set the clock speed. Um, you usually don't want to go into low speed mode. Set the clock speed to low, one, one point something megahertz unless you're accessing save RAM in the uh, Tennokoi bank or Tennokoi at attachment or the CD uh, backup memory. Uh, set clock speed to high is usually what you want to do at the start of your program so that the PC Engine runs in high speed mode. Finally, the mysterious set instruction sets the T flag in the processor status register. Um, and what the T flag does is kind of complicated but any of the arithmetic instructions in the accumulator, you know, add uh, or and or, or subtract, uh, don't pass through the accumulator. They will pass through uh, a memory location in zero page that the X register points to. So it redirects uh, arithmetic uh, operations through to the zero page to whatever you know uh, X is pointed to. So basically, it treats uh, it treats the uh, zero page as a 256 byte accumulator, which is pretty pretty useful. It could be useful. However, every time you ex execute one of these instructions, the T flag gets reset. It gets cleared again. So basically, you have to uh, set the T flag and then immediately do an arithmetic instruction, and that's going to clear the T flag. But at least you uh, haven't used the accumulator. You've kept it free for some other operation. Kind of kind of tricky and kind of weird. But um, I don't know if I've seen any <laughs> games ever use it but I haven't looked deeply enough. Um, someday I'll use it myself too. So I've made a little table uh, just summarizing these new instructions here, that are ones that are new to the 6280. Uh, there's basically swap, swap 8x, swap 8y, swap x and y. You can clear registers, clear a, clear x, clear y. Okay, These are all pretty standard and logical. You can test bits. Okay, Test bit n in an absolute or zero page location, in, or indexed x, branch to subroutine. That's what I've said already. Okay. Um, here's ones that are a little bit more specific to the PC Engine. Transfer the accumulator between uh, to and from the memory paging register. TAM and then N, TMA and then N. Transfer block. Okay. I believe it's seven bytes long. So the instruction opcode TII or TDD, TIA, TAI, TIN, uh, and then source destination and then the length, 16 bit each. TII is transfer increase increase, so that means 
the source and destination bytes each get increased after every byte that's transferred. TDD is transferred decrease decrease. The uh, source and destination get decreased or decremented after each transfer. TIA is transfer increase alternate. That means the source keeps on increasing, but the destination alternates between that byte and the next highest byte. So if you uh, transfer some source in a block to uh, address 0002, it'll save to 2, and then it'll save the next byte to 3, and then it'll save the next byte to 2, and it'll save the next byte after that to 3, and that's a way to have a block transfer into the VRAM, basically. TAI does the opposite. It alternates the source, for example, from VRAM, and then it increments the destination only. So that's a way of copying from VRAM or copying some from some register, 16-bit register, into RAM. And then TIN is transfer increment none, no change. So the source keeps on increasing, but the destination does not change. Um, this would be applicable maybe to the sound uh, memory, uh, where the waveform write pointer is uh, 0806 hex, and that never changes. So you would copy from your ROM or your RAM to that same register 32 times, or however many times you want. And then here's store to VDC ports. Store to the first port, usually the address port, and then ST1 and ST2 transfers to the, the low byte and the high byte of data. Clock speed set, I've explained, and then set the T flag. Um, it routes the next arithmetic instruction through zero page um, indexed by X rather than the accumulator. I've cleaned up this text a little bit so it's a bit clearer to understand. Um, I took out these parentheses. Uh, so this, the T flag reroutes uh, the next arithmetic instruction through uh, zero page location zero zero plus whatever is in X uh, rather than the accumulator. So I think that was uh, fast enough. I hope it was a quick and understandable summary of the new opcodes in the CPU. and. Um, they're pretty handy, they're pretty useful. They don't make you scratch your head, mostly. Um, so I think if you make good use of these, this will make the CPU more act more like a 16-bit uh, CPU in some ways, uh, because you can uh, point to many different locations and you can do block transfers and 16-bit uh, style block transfers as well, which is pretty cool. So I'll stop there about... I'll, I'll finish that about the uh, 6280 CPU differences. Okay.